Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter here at Christ Lutheran Church as we worship together online in our homes. We invite you to participate in the worship by following along on the text as is written on the screen. Let us begin. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Alleluia! Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Even as we are apart, we are living together in trust and hope as a community of faith. And so we confess that faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. First reading this morning is from the book of Acts, second chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the people. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, who is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that God would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that you are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. 
My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose great mercy we have been given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Thanks be to God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, when you look at a group of people, there's always someone who didn't get the memo, who are left behind, who are out of the loop, someone who accidentally gets out of step, a day late, a dollar short. Now, we're all isolated and disrupted in our normal way of doing things and our rhythms of life and how we relate to each other. So it's easy for us to get out of step a little bit. Start asking, what, it's Sunday already? 
and we start mourning the things we've left behind. We discover that shopping really was a major social activity, and that doing our normal errands of life was something we actually enjoyed. And that mental health and well-being depends on predictability and safety. This morning we meet the patron saint of all those who didn't get the memo, Thomas. The one who was gone when an important revelation was made. A revelation that changed everything for the disciples on that Easter evening. Jesus comes into a locked room. He breathes on them. He gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit, the office of the keys to forgive and retain sin. This is a new truth. It becomes shattering. It breaks all the old patterns. It was the first step into a new world. But Thomas didn't share the experience. If we study the word carefully, we notice what Thomas really did was set up a, a system of tests, conditional tests. If you put the question into the positive sense, it would be like this. When I put my hands in his side, when I feel the nail holes in his arm or wrist or hand, when all that happens, then I'll believe. You see, Thomas doesn't necessarily doubt. He just wanted proof. He was a realist. And he didn't request a single thing more than what the disciples had already received from Jesus, those that were present on that Easter evening. And when you read through all the resurrection accounts in the Bible, you quickly realize that Thomas was not alone in wondering if it could possibly be true. They all had their moments. What's fair for them should be fair for Thomas. But Thomas has become the scapegoat for all those people that want to think doubt and faith are polar opposites. Theologian Paul Tillich points out that doubt is not the opposite of faith, it's actually a necessity for faith. The Bible itself speaks of faith as not believing in the things that we see, but in the things that are unseen, not so obvious, not so easily proved. You see, doubt drives us to answers, and doubt drives us to deeper understandings. So Thomas has gotten a bad rap. He's gotten the nickname Doubting Thomas. But Thomas also reminds us to be gentle with the 75% of our neighbors who don't belong to an active faith community. We all know that even inside the community, we have our moments when faith is not easy. And this is such a time. I was watching a PBS special this past week on the history of Christianity. An interesting point in history was brought up that after World War I, the carnage in the death, battling over a few hundred feet of mud in the trenches of France. It put Christianity into crisis. The easy answers were suddenly not so true. Where is the love of God when you have to go through all that? What becomes of a faith of grace when all you see is carnage? That's a good example how faith in doubt had to work together to find an answer. And for us right now, it's hard to find an answer when you're trying to survive in the middle of the question. We do know that we're going to feel differently about everything in a couple of years. Patron St. Thomas is the leader in that. Rather than calling him Doubting Thomas, we should probably call him Honest Thomas. Because Honest Thomas responds not just with doubt, but with definite conditions for believing. If Jesus truly is risen, Thomas simply asks for the same proof the rest of the disciples got. On this Sunday after Easter, Honest Thomas is an example of what it means to be human in the light of Easter. Thanks be to God that we have someone like Thomas in our scripture, that God's word is so honest and open, 
that faith isn't always praise and glory. Faith isn't always happy songs. Faith isn't always uplifting. Sometimes it's a struggle. Jesus teaches, Do you believe because you've seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. That's grace. Jesus' blessing is for all of us, from John's ancient church time up to our own. All of us who have managed to believe without the benefit of a direct experience. We who have not put a finger into the holes of the nails or put our hand in his side, nevertheless are given the gift of the Spirit in our baptism. The Spirit that calls us, gathers us, enlightens us, and makes us saints. The Spirit that grows the faith inside of us, even in these times where faith is not easy. Now that's quite a thing to say. We are a resurrection people. We believe in Easter. We know that the joy of being a Christian is with us no matter what. We don't need to have it figured out before we come to church, even when church is on YouTube. Jesus sends us out into our world to give this world hope and love, faith and joy. In the spirit of that Easter morning, we too have been given what we need. Christ is with us, and Christ is alive in us. Amen. Let us pray together. O Lord, I call to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. 
O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave and crowns me with loving kindness and mercy. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. We pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us from harm. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Stay sheltered in place. Spread the good news. Thanks be to God.